Welcome to La La Land. That's pretty much where we're at. <laughs> okay, so today I guess we're just going to talk about what I do and how I got started. Um, I'm here with Alexis, my social media manager. Shout out to her. Alexis Gray. Public relations. Public relations. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, so I'm always drinking moonshine. It's Moonshine Monday, and today, pineapple upside down cake moonshine, because it's my favorite. If it's not at your ABC store, you need to go get it there. Ask for Kelly's pineapple upside down moonshine. Whoop. Just to get the nerves out of the way before I start talking about this. Um, okay, so how in the world did we get started? I started, let's just go back to... So I graduated from UNCW with a studio art degree. Fresh out of college, I became a high school art teacher. Um, did it for going on five years. While I was teaching art, I opened up a paint and sip studio. So, um, and that was like the first year. I think it was within the first year of teaching, I opened up the paint and sip studio. Um, if you don't know what a paint and sip studio is, it's where you bring your wine and we teach you how to paint cute paintings. So I've been around alcohol <laughs> forever. <laughs> now we're switching from wine to moonshine, and I like it. Um, literally, like my go-to saying is like, <laughs> why drink wine when you can have moonshine? <laughs> Anyways, so while I was teaching art, I was also I owned a paint and sip studio. So I taught art for five years, and then I, I've at this point I still own my studio. It's in downtown Southern Pines. You should go check it out. Um, I've owned that for eight years. That's where I got really comfortable in learning um, that I love to paint with people, in front of people. I like being interactive with people. I don't like to paint in my studio by myself. It's not really my thing. I mean, I do like to paint, but I'm learning that. I truly love interacting with people while I paint. So, um, for me to keep my paint and sip studio going during COVID, because that time was hard for everybody. It doesn't matter who you were. Um, it was hard in some way. Um, I pretty much was like, it's better for my crew for me to take myself out of the situation so that they can all keep their jobs and keep doing what they're doing and the studio could stay there for the community. So I was like, okay, I'm going to go off on my own and I'm going to start painting at weddings just to make some income for myself. And um, I know that's backwards for a lot of people because I think a lot of other studios or businesses would probably cut their people to save the expense. But I was like, I'm thinking long term because we're going to make it through this, you know. Like I, I still need my team in order for the studio to keep going. And now I'm glad I did that because now I need my team in order for me to keep going. Um, so I started painting at weddings and I just want to share some of my people. And I, I would take my easel, I'd take my paints, I'd take my paint brushes, and I'd just paint at the wedding. Um, my best friend was actually one of my first customers and then one of my former students was one of was my next customer that kind of um, developed the whole thing. And, you know, I learned so much from it. Um, I don't think you understand how tired you can get from sitting there painting for five hours at a wedding while people are coming to, like, talk to you. So I learned a lot of lessons from those first two weddings, and then we developed it. So I'm just going to show you guys some of the different styles that I do for my wedding. So um, this one, I loved this one. So this is, like, no faces. We've got the dogs here. Um... You know, if you've seen my style lately, it's kind of, it's opposite of this. I use a lot of black backgrounds, high contrast, a lot more like this is my now style, so it's really developed. But two years ago, this is what, where I started. And um, we did no faces. The bride specifically wanted no faces. She just has like a more modern look. She likes, um, she just likes the geometric and she wanted more bright colors, um, show the lights in there, and she wanted to emphasize the, um, kind of like these, these beams that was at the venue, and then she really wanted her dogs there. The dogs weren't actually there, so I used um, their photos. I referenced, referenced their photos. 
but this was one of my first one that year too so I really appreciated being at that one let's see what's next and then this was another early one and see I made copies of them just so I could show you guys <laughs> um, but this one so I customize my paintings to be exactly what my brides want so I don't have like one little formula that it's like this is how your painting is going to look it's I meet with my brides now it's gotten to where I talk to them over the phone you know and um, just because we're all so crazy and my schedule's getting crazy if you're following me I'm like in between Tennessee and Daytona all the time so on the phone's the best way um, but this bride really she didn't want her whole party she loved her whole party but she really wanted it centered on it takes three for a marriage to work and you know that's that would be her her husband and then Jesus um, so all three so what we did was we symbolized Jesus with the cross and then I even got so that wasn't her that wasn't what her what is that called an arbor is that what the arbor that's an arbor so that wasn't as her arbor we just integrated that it was physically there but we we wanted them close and then she really loved her bouquet so she was like I really want my bouquet but she just wanted more of like the nice calming atmosphere a little bit of the landscape and so we made sure she also loved her dress so um, we made her dress kind of the focal point and that's how we come up with this one I always use hot pink okay if you know my if you know me I always use hot pink you'll always see teals and you always see metallics or golds in my stuff um, these are prints so these canvas prints I actually offer to my people in case they want to give it to their mother of the groom mother of the bride grandparents it's really a cool gift to get these so um, you can actually go to my website if you want to inquire about weddings um, and then this one so this one was actually an anniversary gift. Um, they had gotten married before I started doing the service that I do, this live painting. And um, the bride, well the wife at this point, she, I, I think she was telling her husband that she really wishes that I could have come to their wedding. And I get that a lot. I get a lot of people, they're like, I wish you would have came to my wedding. and. and Believe me, I wish I could have came to your wedding too. <laughs> but, and I wish I would have been doing this for the past 10 years. But, you know, the Lord always has a plan. There's always a reason and timing is everything. And there is a reason I had to wait for this. And um, But he got in touch with me. He's like, hey, our anniversary is coming up. I'd love for you. Could you paint a painting as if you were at my wedding? And I was like, heck yeah, send me some pictures. So he sent me a picture. Um, this painting was so cool because when I saw her dress, I used um, some cool mediums to make her dress just shimmer and glossy. And when you like turn it this way, there's like iridescent, um, there's iridescent um, features to it. He also, this um, was also the first painting that I did with, that was really big. So the actual canvas was, you know, huge. And I was so thankful for that because it got me inspired to start doing my paintings big. So this this painting right here was the first time that I realized, okay, we can do anniversary presents. We can do from pictures. Even though I wasn't physically at your wedding, we can still make it look like I was, you know? He also was the first one that pushed me to start doing bigger canvases, and now I literally only do big canvases. And then the small canvases are normally prints. So that's kind of cool. Um, and then this is more of my new style, which is I uh, start with a black background. We use a lot of high contrast. We push our pinks a lot more, really dive into the metallics. And I'm also starting to try to get a little more intimate with the composition and get closer to um, the couple. And, you know, always still bring in, if I can use flowers or light, I love doing that and I even like putting a message if if the bride wants it again when I meet with my brides I we talk about their personality what their scheme is um, and I do offer all these styles just because I want the bride to love their painting because it's gonna be in their house all the time and um, 
So, you know, we do personalize it. But this is where my natural style is starting to get to. Um, we also do our own frames. Let me pull a, give me just a second and I'll show you my frames. So I got my prints. We do customized, um, I got my Jeep in here. <laughs> we do prints. We do customized um, consultations. We do large canvas sizes. I use metallics. But let's slide this one in here. So we do our own framing. It's a shaker frame. Um, I guess I'll rotate a little bit. Is that a good? So it's a shaker frame. My mom, I taught my mom how to make these. I learned in 3D art how to use like the miter saw. I think that's right. Don't quote me. And how to use the nail gun. And then I showed her how we do these. And then we do, um, you know, we have a gray stain. We have a whitewash. We have natural. I'm a big fan of the natural with the black background love it and then the dark brown is our uh, best seller and that comes standard if you don't want the shaker frame then we have some other options for certain sizes and that's just because um you know we get those we don't know how to make them <laughs> so we have to actually um get those and we have to outsource that um but that's only available for certain sizes these shaker frames because we make them in-house um they're available for any of our paintings so anytime you want to shake your frame and my mom will not let me charge more than what we <laughs> she won't let me charge a lot for the shaker frames she cracks me up she's like but now the price is going up on everything she might have a different <laughs> different outlook but she literally is like i had so much fun making these frames i'm not letting you charge too much on them so these shaker frames come standard with any of our canvases um, you just kind of opt out if you don't want to shake a ring, which is fine too. You don't hurt our feelings. Um, but that's pretty much how my weddings go. I will say, I normally, just to tell you more about my weddings, I bring my easel, the canvas. I bring one little stand for my paints and paintbrushes. I'm normally there about an hour before. Hour and a half if there's a long drive, just in case traffic's crazy. An hour before and then I start from start to finish at the wedding by finish I mean 85% of it done and then I normally bring it back to my studio so that you don't have to worry about transporting it you know if you're going on a honeymoon you don't really want to worry about a huge canvas and somebody taking care of it and putting it in the right place so um, and then you come and pick it up once you're back from your honeymoon a couple weeks later and that's how it goes so, if you're interested in weddings, go to lauraashleyliveart.com and click on weddings and inquire all about the pricing and sizing and all that information. But I just gave you a big rundown, so all you got to do is just save the date pretty much. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you guys for joining. Don't forget to go to the ABC store and get your moonshine. And if you know somebody that's getting married or if you're getting married or if you want an anniversary present, or I guess if you want a dog portrait, all you got to do is, <laughs> which we weren't going to talk about dog portraits yet, but all you got to do is go to Laura Ashley Live Art and inquire. See you soon. So good.